So you know me, I love my casseroles. I love slow cooker recipes. Some, sometimes though, you just, you know, you don't have time, you don't get up in the morning and do a slow cooker recipe, you didn't think about it, or you didn't have time to make a casserole. You come home from work, you're like, what in the world should we have for dinner? It happens to me all the time, probably happens to you too. Well, maybe you have a couple chicken breasts, um, some potatoes that need using. Make my quick and easy chicken Tuscan skillet. So I started with a little bit of olive oil in the biggest skillet you have, and then uh, about two to three boneless, skinless chicken breasts, or you could use thighs, boneless thighs if you want. And I've cut them into smaller pieces, a couple inch pieces, because they're gonna cook much quicker that way. And so everybody's hungry, you come in after a long day, you gotta figure out dinner in a real hurry. And I'm starting to come up with more and more one skillet recipes because people are loving them. Ann loves them too, one dish to wash. Yeah, I'm all about less dishes. So is Ann. So you notice I'm taking the time to actually spread out the chicken so it's not touching each other, not overcrowding it. That way it's going to cook nice and quickly and get a nice brown color. So I'm going to season my chicken with salt, a little bit of salt and pepper. And you notice that sizzle? You want your pan to be smoking hot like that. It's going to cook nice and quick, and again, we're going to get some great color on the chicken. I always kind of put one piece of chicken, or if I'm doing beef or whatever I'm browning, in the skillet and kind of test it. If it's not hot enough, if I'm not hearing that sizzle, then I would take the piece out and wait for the pan to get hot enough. You want that pan to be nice and warm. Already starting to get some nice color on the chicken, so I'm just going to flip it over. And seriously, I'm putting more and more of these one skillet recipes together in my cookbook on the show here. Because people are so crazy busy and we're ending up, you know, hitting the drive through fast food restaurants or ordering pizza. It's so much better to make dinner at home, quick, easy, inexpensive, and, and this recipe is actually pretty healthy. But it's still, I know we've got some really cold weather coming our way again. So this is still going to be that, you know, it's chicken and potatoes. It's still going to be that stick to your ribs kind of food, but in a more healthy way. Okay. Taking some baby red potatoes, and you, depending on how big they are, sometimes they're real little guys, and you could just cut those in half. These are a little bit bigger, so I'm going to chop them up a little bit. And again, I want these to cook pretty quickly, so I'm going to cut them into little, little pieces, dice them up. The smaller the pieces, the quicker they're going to cook. So if you've got some more time and you want your potatoes a little chunkier, you can keep them bigger. But because they're raw, I think the littler is kind of the better way to go. That way they'll get a little bit crispy. Okay. Well, Ann really went little on the ones she did, so maybe mine are a little bit big. So we now who know who's going to be in the Super Bowl. Okay, should I say it? Am I going to get in trouble for this? Oh well, I'm kind of glad the 49ers aren't in there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was at the game with the Packers and I just didn't want to see them move on. I'm sorry. So it's Seattle and Denver. It's going to be a good game. And the game, interesting enough, we were talking about this at work today. Super Bowl is in New Jersey this year. So normally it's in a warm weather destination, you know, California, Florida, Arizona, New Orleans, Texas, but in New Jersey. Interesting. So we're planning a big Super Bowl show next week. Watch. We'll be putting together all sorts of different game day recipes. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, my director Greg said it was 65 and sunny in Denver yesterday. Wow. Well, maybe that's what helped them win. All right, so my chicken's just getting some nice color.
doesn't need to be cooked completely through. Just needs to be almost there because we're going to pop it back into the skillet. At this point, I'm going to get my chicken out. And I'm going to throw my potatoes in. A little bit more oil. I'm using a nonstick pan, so we're really not using a ton of oil. And there's still some left over from the chicken. And now we're going to throw our potatoes in. I'm using about six to to 10, depending on the side, baby red skin potatoes. Oh, but I don't want to get the, there's a big, this piece, big piece of garlic. I don't want to throw that in there yet. We'll get to the garlic in a minute. And you're saying yum? You like this recipe? Spread out those potatoes. I want to get some nice color on those too. And I'm going to get to work on some fresh garlic. It's a Tuscan chicken and potato a skillet, so we're going to have some great Italian flavors in here. Garlic, fresh rosemary is going to be the secret ingredient, a little balsamic vinegar, and fresh parsley and oregano. So I just like to use the back of the knife to chop up my garlic. I don't know, I just still think that the whole garlic press thing is one more dish to wash. And in this recipe, we don't need it perfectly minced, so it's kind of a rustic dish. When you come home from work after a long day, you don't have to worry about everything being perfect. It's the way I roll. All right, I actually don't want to mess with the potatoes too much because I want them to get some nice color. So let's get to work on our rosemary. This is really going to be one of the um, secrets to make this dish really extra special, and that's some fresh rosemary. Now, you don't happen to have any fresh rosemary. Dried rosemary will work. Um, just a heads up, though, dried rosemary is very strong in flavor. Rosemary in general is a, a real strong herb. Um, so, if you're using dried, you want to use a little bit less. This recipe calls for about a tablespoon. So, maybe just a, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of the dried. And rosemary is one of those herbs that you really have to take a minute to chop it up. Nobody wants big pieces of rosemary in the dish. And I've also got some Italian flat leaf parsley. So just some fresh herbs to kind of make this a little bit extra special. Again, dried parsley would work. How are our potatoes doing? Oh yeah. Starting to smell good and they're getting a little bit crispy, which is nice. We'll just finish on our herbs here. Boy, if there's ever a winter to really cook up a bunch, this is that winter. <laughs> just that winter kind of comfort food, want to just stay in and hunker down, read a good book, light a fire in the fireplace watching lots of movies at our house and that kind of thing. Okay. So at home, maybe let the potatoes cook a little bit longer. I throw my garlic in. Now, you know the rule with fresh garlic. Once it hits the pan, really got to keep it moving, moving, moving. About 30 seconds or so. 
I don't want to burn the garlic. A little bit more salt and pepper with the potatoes. And now we're going to hit the pan. We've got some great little drippings from the chicken. And we're going to hit the pan with a little bit of dry white wine. And these little bottles, these little mini bottles, this just happens to be a Chardonnay, really work great for cooking. You don't want to invest in a big bottle. A little bit of chicken stock. These are going to soften the potatoes up a little bit. And this is a, a secret ingredient. It's really going to be, bring us some great flavor. This is just a bottled Italian balsamic vinaigrette. Uh, you didn't have this on hand, and normally what I would do is just take a little bit of balsamic vinegar and a little bit of oil and some uh, maybe some dried herbs and, and make your own. So you don't have to run out and buy this. You probably already have balsamic vinegar, but this is a shortcut. So we're going to do a little bit of that in there, give it some great flavor. Our chicken at this point goes back in, and any juices that accumulated in the bowl there. And at this point, I just want to let this cook for maybe five minutes or so, and then we'll uh, top it. Oregano can go in because we're using dried oregano, but I don't want to put those fresh herbs, the rosemary and the parsley in, until just before this is done. So I want this just to cook for a few minutes until that liquid kind of cooks down a little bit. The cook, uh, chicken cooks all the way through and those potatoes get a little bit softened. I would serve this with a nice big salad, maybe a crusty loaf of bread, and call it a day. This is so great, too, because dinner gets served right out of the skillet. You can just take the whole skillet to the table and serve it right there. And you've got your chicken, potatoes, the herbs, and then we're also going to finish with a little Parmesan cheese.